Hi friends, welcome to Kivex Technologies. This is Mahesh. So in the previous videos, we discussed uh, different types of functions available in Kotlin. Okay, so in this video, we will start So object-oriented programming concepts will start in Kotlin. Okay, so uh, in my Java videos also many times I explained what is meant by object-oriented programming or if you want to learn any object-oriented programming if you want to learn mainly you have to understand four things you have to understand one is class second thing is data behavior of a class next object to learn any object-oriented programming language we had to understand this four concepts you have to understand basically you have to understand this four class data behavior and object so we already discussed about the data part we already discussed now we already discussed about the functions in the behavior also we discussed now let's start the discussion on constructor but before discussing on the constructor you should have an idea on how to create a class also because there is a dependency there is a dependency on constructor and class so first we'll see how to create a class in kotlin then we'll discuss a constructor part okay just i'm giving a uh, definition class describes the data and behavior or if you are not satisfied with my answer then you can proceed with your answer blueprint to create an object a class is a blueprint to create an object fine you can proceed with that answer okay if you are satisfied with my answer then you can mention like this class describes the data and behavior fine the syntax to create a class in kotlin is we we'll use a keyword called class we we'll use a keyword called what class then you have to specify the class name okay class then you have to specify what a class name then you can specify the data data of a class using variables or properties some people will call as properties also next thing is behavior you can mention through constructor function and block i think class will contain only this thing only either it will contain the data or it contains a behavior apart from this you don't see any logic inside the class either data or behavior okay so this is the, the syntax of creating a class we'll see uh, when you are using a inheritance how the syntax will be that part we'll discuss later this is a normal class without any inheritance concept okay so we'll see one class will create okay inside the kotlin i'm creating a kotlin file or class i'm creating a kotlin file I'm creating one file I'm creating called a vehicle creating a class called what vehicle okay okay so here I'm creating one class I'm creating called vehicle okay vehicle is the class fine we created a class we created inside the vehicle class we'll create one data let's take for example a vehicle uh, will have a wheels so i'm creating one variable called number of wheels okay i don't want to initialize this one later i want to initialize so you can make it as a type you can mention so type as integer okay so this is one variable so we are not uh, initialize this value later we want to initialize so if you have a requirement of initializing this value later what you can do is uh, we have a method called uh, 
property called late in it or otherwise you can initially assign some dummy value later you can change that no problem okay number of wheels we given as zero so i'm taking another variable name which is a type of string this one also initially empty i given okay i'm creating one function inside the vehicle class display vehicle info so requirement is just I want to print the number of wheels and what is the name of the vehicle. So print LM. Dollar name and vehicle have number of weights. So you'll get the output as vehicle name is for example if we send a Hyundai so you'll get the name as vehicle name is Hyundai and vehicle have how many wheels you'll get that wheels count you'll get print you it will print okay so this is a syntax of creating a class uh, syntax we see and this is an example of creating a class so we created one class we created fine I'm creating a main function because I want to run this program. So I created one main function I created. Okay. I created outside the vehicle class. Okay. Now I created one main function because I want to run this program. So inside the main function, can I call directly this one? Display vehicle info. Can I call directly? No, you cannot call because this display vehicle info method is available inside the vehicle class inside the vehicle class this method is available so or these these are also called as member function member functions are also called as instance function okay these are also called as what a member function or instance function to call this member function what you need you need an object we need what an object we need because basically object only will contains this data and behavior. So what you had to do is you had to create an object, right? So we'll see what is object. What is object? Object consists data and behavior. Class describes the data and behavior. Object consists data and behavior. So the syntax to create an object in case of Java, how we'll create an object is by using new keyword and we'll specify the class name, right? The syntax to create an object in Java is new space. We will specify the class name we'll specify. So this is a syntax to create an object in Java, but in Kotlin, so no need to use any new keyword. So directly use the class name and opening and closing of this parenthesis. So this is the syntax of creating an object in Kotlin. Okay. So no need of using a new keyword. Just simply use class name and opening and closing of this bracket. Okay. So let's see here. If I want to call this method, but before calling this method, you had to initialize some data. You had to set some data to this number of wheels and name. Right. Okay, I'm creating one variable to hold the reference of the object. For example, V. So I'm creating the object I'm creating for vehicle. I created an object I created for vehicle class. I created an object. Next, V dot, what is the name? I given the vehicle name as Hyundai. v dot number of wheels is equals to 4 so now we created an object we created now so v is an object now v is an object for vehicle class okay v is an object for vehicle class so what is the name and what is the number of wheels and then you can call v dot display vehicle info 
then you can run this program and see the output. So vehicle name is Hyundai and vehicle have four wheels. So a class can have multiple objects also, right? A class can have multiple objects. So object consists data and behavior and a class can have multiple objects. Not only single object, you can create n number of objects you can create for a class. So Meaning here, I'm creating another object I'm creating here. For example, I given V1. So V1 is another object now. For example, I'm giving the name as Tata Bus. It have a number of wheels. For example, six. Now you can see, we'll get two objects we created. So we got two times we got a output we got so vehicle name is hyundai vehicle have four wheels second thing tata bus and so vehicle have six wheels okay so i hope now you got an idea on how to create the class and how to create the object for a class okay so we'll see more about the inheritance and all the object oriented programming concepts we'll see in the next videos so in this video so my intention is to explain how to create a class and how to create an object in Kotlin fine now we got we understand how to create a class not completely still we have to understand the object oriented programming concepts like how to define a parent class and all this so that's why I'm not giving a tick mark but object creation we seen already just to use the class name so to create an object there is no new operator now let's discuss about the constructor so in java what what is mean by constructor is if you create a block with class name if you create a block with the class name so that block is called as constructor so if you give a different name if you give it will not be considered as a constructor in java it is going to be considered as a function, not as a constructor. So what is meant by constructor? If you create a block with class name, the same class name, so that block is called as constructor. And constructor will be called automatically when the object is created. Explicitly, you cannot call the constructor. See, for example, here, we are calling explicitly we are calling this method right here we are calling this method explicitly for example we are calling this method explicitly we are calling but constructor you cannot call explicitly so constructor is a part of object creation meaning whenever you create an object at that time the constructor will call okay this is all the java discussion just i am doing a refresh kind of thing so what is constructor and what is its behavior okay but in kotlin uh, the constructor syntax is a bit different okay so we'll discuss about the constructor in kotlin okay in kotlin a class can have one primary constructor and one or more secondary constructors in kotlin a class can have one primary constructor and can have one or more secondary constructors so in java constructor means only one constructor a block with class name is called as constructor that's it but in kotlin we have two types of constructors here one is a primary constructor and 
the secondary constructor. So let's see what is primary constructor and how many primary constructors we can create in a class. We can create only one primary constructor. You can create or even if you don't create a primary constructor also, by default every, clip, every class will have a default no argumented constructor, same like in Java. Every class will have a default no argumented constructor, here also same. Okay, but explicitly if you want, you can create constructor, you can create. So if you see the syntax, you will see what exactly primary constructor means. So syntax of primary constructor is, you are creating one class. Okay. You are creating one class. Okay. Primary constructor declaration is a part of class declaration. Meaning, uh, you define a class name, right? After that, you can mention a constructor. Okay. Class. Class name. Constructor. And if you want to take any parameters as an input, so you can specify the parameters you can specify. So this is the primary constructor. So here we are creating a constructor here. You don't need to create a separate block with class name. So in Java, we'll create like this. This is called as a constructor in Java. But here, we will not create inside the class. Primary constructor declaration is a part of class declaration. After class name, use the constructor. And if the constructor is taking any input parameters, you can specify the parameter names you can specify. So we'll try to include this constructor in our existing example. Instead of creating a new one, I'll try to use the same example, what we created here. What I want to do is, this number of wheels and name, explicitly I'm calling this properties I'm calling. But I don't want to send this properties. This one I want to send as part of the object creation, right? Explicitly, I don't want to call these properties. I want to send this data as part of object creation I want to send. Meaning I want to send like this. The name of the vehicle is Hyundai. Okay. The number of wheels is four. I want to send like this. I don't want to send explicitly call the properties. So if you want to send like this, you have to create a constructor here, right? How to create a constructor? Constructor. First thing we are going to get the name, which is a type of string. The second parameter, you are going to get number of wheels. Okay. I remove this variables I remove. Number of wheels, which is a type of integer type. Forget about this statement. We'll discuss about this later. Okay, now we created a constructor we created, a primary constructor we created. Now this constructor is taking two parameters as an input, name and number of wheels. So instead of explicitly calling those properties, I'm sending these two properties as part of object creation I'm sending. As part of object creation, I'm sending these two properties. Fine. Now. Inside this method, I want to print these two variables I want to print. Okay. Uh, before that, you can omit this constructor keyword you can omit. If you are using a primary constructor, you no need to explicitly mention the constructor keyword. Okay. So the syntax is you can write like this, you can write or Simply after the class name, you can put opening and closing of the bracket. You don't need to use the keyword called what? Constructor. You can remove that statement. Okay, so I'll remove this statement. I'll do this. Is also valid syntax. So this is now we created a primary constructor. Okay. Now, okay, we created a primary constructor we created, which is taking two parameters. Now, inside this 
display vehicle info method i want to print the name of the vehicle and number of wheels inside this display vehicle info method i'm printing the name and number of wheels but it is giving an exception you can see here you can see it's creating it's asking to create a local variable why it's asking to create a local variable is what is the main purpose of constructor the main purpose of a constructor is to initialize the variables at the time of object creation this is the purpose of constructor i'm repeating what is the purpose to initialize the data at the time of object creation constructors are used to initialize the data at the time of object creation this is the definition for constructor so not definition the use of constructor so here where you can access directly you can access you cannot access this uh, variables whatever the input we are getting you cannot access directly we have a block called init this is the next part a, a behavior of a class you can describe by using functions constructor and blocks in java we have instance blocks static blocks and all but here here also we have uh, one block is init block we'll discuss about the static blocks in the next sessions okay so init block is also as a part of class class okay class describes a function constructor and blocks so here where you can access this name and number of wheels is you can access only inside the init block okay so this init block is also part of part of constructor invocation okay so when you create an object here right at the time of object creation itself the constructor will be called and the init block also will be called you can access here you can access can access here name number of wheels you can access but if you meaning either you had to write this statement you had to write inside the init block or if you want to access these two variables outside this init block also if you want to access then you had to create it some local variables you had to create name which is a type of string initially i'm making it as null number of wheels also initially i'm making it as type explicitly mentioned it's a string to type and it is a it is a type so now what you have to do is this dot name is equals to name this always refers the instance variable okay remember this number of wheels is equals to number of wheels so this dot name means this one okay whatever the input we are getting so this name means this one here so whatever the input we are getting to this constructor this data we are storing into this local variables we are storing into this variables we are storing okay so this always refers the instance variable because both the names are same okay to separate this local variable uh, the input value of this constructor i want to store into this instance variable so we use this this dot name is equals to name this dot number of wheels is equals to number of wheels now you can access so here whatever we are referring here not the input parameters of constructor this refers these variables okay now let's run the application and see the output okay so hyundai and vehicle have four wheels otherwise simple solution is if you are doing only initialization in the init block you are not executing any logic okay only your requirement is to initialize you can remove all these statements also you can remove
then you can ask a question like if you remove how you'll access these variables simply what you can do is before the parameters use var or val if you want to make it final use val keyword if you have a requirement to reassign the values then use var that's it you no need to create a init block you no need to assign uh, these values into an instance variables so no need if your requirement is only to initialize the values okay then directly you can declare like this so you can omit that init block also you can omit okay this is the primary constructor meaning if you create a constructor as part of the class declaration that is primary constructor how many primary constructors you can create for a class only one primary constructor you can create for a class what about if I want to create a multiple constructors let's take for example uh, if you if you see any class let's take string class let me open this built-in class these are all Kotlin but I want to see the Java so you'll understand So basically, uh, you can have multiple multiple constructors in one class. Okay, I'll try to explain here only. Uh, my requirement is, I want to create multiple constructors. One constructor I want to create for taking only name. Another constructor I want to create only for taking the wheels. One more constructor I want to take for taking the wheels as well as name both. Okay, so. You cannot create a primary constructor in that case if you have a requirement of creating multiple constructors you cannot create a primary constructor you cannot create then what you have to do is you have to create the secondary constructor you have to create so next thing is secondary constructor so a class can have multiple secondary constructors okay the syntax is uh, we had to use a keyword called constructor then the parameter data type and if the requirement is only to assign the data you want to access that variable uh, even outside the init block also simply you can specify use a var or val same like how I discussed for primary constructor so instead of taking the variable and uh, storing into another instance variable directly you can declare as part of the constructor declaration itself okay so this is the constructor board okay now let's see creating one constructor which is taking only name okay so what is the constructor body I'm creating another constructor which is taking the number of wheels and I, I want to create another constructor I want to create see what is the error first we'll try to resolve the error So I don't want to confuse now about this this and super we'll discuss in the next video so I'm removing this primary constructor I'm removing okay now the error got cleared next another constructor 
which is taking the both name and number of wheels. So inside the construct itself, I'm writing here the vehicle name is I'm printing only name here. Okay. In this constructor, I'm printing only the vehicle have number of wheels I'm printing. In this constructor, I'm printing the both name and wheels. Okay. So we created three constructors we can we created here. Now while creating the object, definitely you had to pass parameters here. Correct or not? So definitely we had to pass the parameters. So if I pass only name for example, so now here we are already passing the name and number of wheels. Which constructor will be invoked? The third constructor will be invoked. Right? For example, if I pass only name if I pass, then the first constructor will be executed. If you pass only number, this constructor will be executed. Okay. So like this, a class can have multiple secondary constructors. You can have only one primary constructor and a class can have multiple secondary constructors. Okay. So hope you got an idea on the primary constructor and secondary constructor and how to create a class and how to create an object and how to create a constructors and blocks okay so hope you understand uh, in the next video we'll discuss about the this and super because it's already video video is already lengthy so we'll discuss about the this and super how we will use in the kotlin and we will start the object oriented programming concepts in kotlin like how we'll define the inheritance okay how we'll specify how we'll use the polymorphism in kotlin okay so that required another two sessions so mostly uh, in another five sessions we'll close all this kotlin part and we will start the android application development with kotlin i need another two sessions to discuss this object oriented programming concepts then after that another uh, two three sessions for collections and threads we'll close this kotlin and we'll start the android okay so thanks for watching uh, please press the like button if you like this video and don't forget to subscribe